Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph a linear inequality. And when graphing linear inequalities, they're very similar to graphing linear equations. Um, therefore, we like to have, you know, here's the linear equation in y in slope-intercept form. Um, and in linear inequality is gonna, really going to be the exact same thing, except instead of having an equation, we're going to have an inequality. And that's going to affect our solutions, which we'll talk about later in here. But as far as graphing the inequality, everything for graphing uh, linear equations is going to be the same for graphing linear inequalities. Now, I focus on slope-intercept form, but if you have an inequality that's in standard form, um, you know, something like this, 3x minus 2y is greater than um, 5, you can still go ahead and graph using the intercept method. That's not a problem. Um, however, when it comes into using our, um, you can still go and graph the intercept method, I guess, but I'm just not going to focus on that uh, for this video because I think, you know, the basic way, and at least which most students are most comfortable with, is graphing in slope intercept form. So the first thing we want to do is rewrite our equation in slope intercept form, unless you're going to use the intercept method, which is perfectly fine, um, which I do have a couple examples going through that. The next thing is identify the slope and the y intercept, where m is your slope, b is going to be your y intercept. Then graph using the slope intercept method. And again, regardless if it's an equation or an inequality, the first thing you want to do is plot the y intercept. So you identify what the y intercept is, go to the y axis, and plot that point. Then you use the slope to determine the next point that's going to be on uh, your boundary line in this case, or your graph. Um, Again, slope is going to be the change in any two coordinate points of the y over the x, or like your rise and your run. So you use, use the slope to find your next point. And the important thing about inequalities now is we need to determine the boundary line. Anytime you have an inequality that's going to be less than, now, this is very important. This is only true, uh, actually, I'm sorry, doesn't matter for there. If anytime it's going to be less than, or greater than, then our boundary line is not going to be a part of our solution, which I talked about, so it's going to be dashed. Anytime it's less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, it is going to be a part of our solution. And we can always test that by determining our shading or using test points, picking points that are on those lines to determine if they're dashed or solid or a part of our, not a part of our solution or part of our solution. Um, the next important thing, though, that kind of separates inequalities from equations is determining the shading. because. The inequality symbol, what that does is it now allows for more than one solution rather than just the equation or the graph. So to determine our shading, what we're going to do is we're going to choose a test point, either above or below the line. Well, the best point to always pick is going to be 0, 0. And it doesn't matter if 0, 0 is above or below the line. We just don't want to pick 0, 0 when it falls on the boundary line, because then we're testing the boundary line, which we can easily determine from here. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your boundary line, plug it in to your equation for your x and y values. And then if that makes your inequality true, then that means that point is true. And that means if that point is true under your line, all the points are under, your, all the, under the line are true. So therefore, we represent that by shading. If that test point was false, that mean, and it was below your line, that means all the other points are false. And that means all the points above your line are going to be true. So you'd shade above the line. And that works vice versa, you know, depending on where originally the test point you choose, if it's above or below your line. You just want to see if it's true or false. That way you can determine your shading. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph linear inequalities. Thanks.